but for the moment just following the tutorial yeah and we can kill this guy move around our health has gone down quite a lot but yeah that's where we're gonna get to in a few weeks uh, but we're building up to it our game dev vlog number one and this week we have to introduce the idea of movement and basically getting started um, as you can see beside me here i've already actually gotten a few steps ahead but for the sake of this uh, dev vlog and following along each week i will only do what is introduced uh, we'll be writing it all in rust following the herbert wolferson tutorial all right so we can see things have already kicked off and they want us to draw the at symbol like we said we scroll down we can see some people have already started posting their uh, repos and things I might try to check some of these out maybe even do a video in a couple of weeks on some of the stuff that people have made be interesting to see how other people take on this uh, rust uh, ECS component system which we will be doing today right so to get started I made my repo on github I created a new folder called rogue like uh, 2021 so that's in my projects and to do that all I basically did is I went to my terminal as you can see here down at the bottom and uh, I did cargo init and I gave the project a name so example one or whatever and that will create a rust a rust project for you so we're using the ECS component system and we're using the library called RLTK and so in rust you have what's called a cargo file this is where all your dependencies and external libraries this is where you want to pull them in from and you tell Rust what versions of those libraries you want. So for us here, we see we are using specs, spec derived, specs derived. But the main library we're using is RLTK, which is bracket lib. And if you click on the little button here, I mean, you could build something just by looking at these documents here, but we're just going to follow the tutorial along. So we go back to our main.rs and main.rs gets created when we create the project, but I've also created these two other files, player.rs and spawner.rs. Yeah, so we've imported the RLTK library here into our main.rs. Um, and we've created some structs. To start off, basically, we want to move the player on, around on the screen. And so what we need to do that is we need a position and so we created a position component and we need it to be renderable on the screen. So what is being displayed on the screen for us? And that's the renderable component. Now we're using ECS, so entity component system. So these are our components and they basically are something, some sort of data. So you have two things, you have components and systems and systems are like your logic, your maybe your uh, AI logic and things like that. Components are basically these structs where you store data. The main struct in all of this will be your state and we have what's called a, a world and this is taken from the RLTK library. It's basically a hash map of the resources and that's where we can insert and access the resources for our, our world. All right, so we have our state, our position and what to render on the screen. Uh, we also have this run state enum, which I'll get to later. I've added it for the moment just because it will become quite important later on. But basically, um, right now it doesn't really do anything. There's only one run state and that's the player's turn. So it's not really important. But in the future, we'll have different states like uh, the game is paused or the game is it's the AI's turn or it's, uh, you know, some sort of setup. So different states that your game can be in. Following along, we use, we implement game state for our state. So we have our world in its state and we implement the game state. And the game state will have a tick. So it, each tick is uh, like each uh, turn in, in, the, in the game. And we also implement state for state, for the state struct. And that has a run systems as part of that trait. Um, right now it doesn't do anything, but later on again, we will come to systems and states. And this is basically where you will tell your system to run all of its AI and other things. So to start off, we have our main and we can return a RLTK error true main. So we use the R RLTK builder and with that, then we can build our context, which is basically our terminal. So if you click on that there, you can see it basically creates a terminal context for us with all of these uh, values. And that's how we're going to be displaying. We're going to be using this uh, B terminal uh, library to help us uh, display uh, the game. Yeah, and so what we're telling is to build a 80 by 50 uh, basically terminal and it's going to be have the title Shane's first roguelike. And for fun, I've added these um, these effects to it. So we have contacts with uh, scan lines and, and burn color. So that just makes it look cool because normally uh, I'll show you. So without these, this is what our game looks like. So it's just a black screen 
uh, with our little character. But then if we turn, if we uh, switch on these uh, contacts, so we're gonna put on these scan lines to make it look cool and some color burn. I like blue, but you can go with green, whatever color you want. Yeah, there you go. You can see it has this like color in the center and it's a little bit blue, looks much nicer. We have our game state and we're initializing it here. So we've initialized our terminal and now we're initializing our game state and we're just gonna use this world new. That's part of the library. So we don't have to worry about this too much. Don't have to get into it. It just makes a new world for us, which is basically a new hash map. And then we start uh, registering different things to it. So we register all our components and we have three components, player, position, and renderable. And so these are components. We can use these for different entities as well. They don't all have to be just for the player. We're just telling the game that they exist. And now we initialize the player's position. We're just hard coding it for the moment where they start their start position, but later on we'll make this more dynamic. Yeah, so we have this player entity that we're creating and we're in the spawner.rs uh, and we're using the function player. And we pass in our world, so as a mutable reference. So that means we can um, change it and change its values in that function. That's what that allows that to do. And the player's position. And then from there, we create the entity. So we're basically just um, abstracting some of the logic into other other files and, and functions. So we take the world and we do this create entity, which is part of, again, the RLTK library. And it just creates an entity for us. And then we give it these components. Um, we're giving it position and we're telling it this is its position. We're making it renderable and we're telling it to render it as this. So we're giving it the at symbol. I decided to go with a white and a green. And then we return an entity here at the end. And then, yeah, that's what we have our player entity. And then we insert a player entity. We insert our the point that the player is on. Actually, I don't think I need this right now. I think I can live without that, but don't quote me on that. Um, and then we insert the uh, get the run state, um, which is also not quite important yet, but just having it there so we can build on that later. And then RLTK has this uh, main loop that needs to be called to just basically tell it, okay, we've imported everything we need for our world. Now let's run our loop. And what that will do is we'll basically start calling tick and, and tick will render to the screen um, what, whatever we tell it to basically. So first we clear it and then we create this new run state and then we match on the run state. So the run state is basically an, an enum. It's this uh, run state enum that we have here. And while well, there's only one uh, possible return, which is a player turn. So of course we match on player turn and if it's player turn, we give uh, we look for a player input. And I'll explain what player input does, but basically we put it up, down, left, right. We get that input and then we, um, yeah, we basically render everything to the screen then because we tell the player go up. Okay. Then it takes positions and renderables and sets them, uh, in our, in our terminal. So player input, as you can see, basically takes, uh, the state and the terminal, and then it gets, uh, what's called this virtual key code, which is in the RLTK library as well and matches on A, D, S, W. Uh, that, those are the controls I like to use. You can put these to up, down, left, right as well. But basically, if you put an input on one of these characters, it will take that and then do what you tell it to do. So for A, we want to try and move the player and we want to move it on by this X position and by this Y position. So minus one X position. So if you were to move left, if you imagine it to be a graph, you go back one on the X axis. And we pass in our world so we can edit the state. So we give our we get our writable position. So ECS has this write storage, so we can change what's in storage. So we change the position. We change the we make the well we get a writable reference to position and to store and to player. And then what we do is we do this for loop where any time there's a uh, an entity that has player and position both implemented then we go okay well we want to edit that and there's only one which is our player um, but it's useful to be able to have multiple if you're dealing with ai or or, or you know some other characters or entities um, and so the position we update the x and y axis um, for that uh, position on that player 
So we do that for each of these and then that will obviously update the game state. And then we read those new positions and we render them onto the screen. And that's basically what a tick does for the moment. So reads our run state. The run state is only ever one. It's only ever a player turn. Take the player input, um, write to storage, whatever the new input is, and, and then read it and then put it, display it on the screen. And it's that's basically it. That's all it does for the moment. Um, we cargo run again. I mean, I've already shown you this, but we'll go through it one more time. Yeah, and that's it. It's quite basic. I am just hitting AWSD here on my keypad and it's moving around. Uh, there's no map limit or anything. It's just, just this uh, terminal. And yeah, so I'll show you actually what this is going to look like down the line. And down the line, we'll have something that looks a bit more like this. So we even have a mouse cursor where we can get information on things. So, oh yeah, it's the player. We have our health, you know, welcome to my first game. And we can move around just like we've seen you, seen us do. And look, oh yeah, we get some output. We're attacking an orc, which is just a little O for the moment. What I'd really like to do is actually, <laughs> I know it's against roguelike, uh, maybe classic roguelike, but I'd really like to give these proper graphics and so maybe um, figure out some way to render 2D images for all of this. And you can see the map is quite random. It's all uh, connected through alleyways and dungeons and yeah, classic roguelike. But yeah, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Looking forward to the next one. Bye-bye.